BlackRock has a secret plan for Ethereum that is much, much bigger than most people realize. Listen, I've been studying BlackRock and their intersection with crypto for a long time, studying it intensely. And the picture and vision that they have for Ethereum is much bigger than you realize. In today's video, I will tell you why this is much bigger than you realize and much bigger than anyone is expecting. And I'm gonna give you my playbook on how to capitalize this very short window of opportunity from BlackRock's hidden agenda. Today is the third show in a series of my top ecosystem picks for 2024. And I'm gonna walk you through step by step on the different altcoins that I think are very bullish and are going to fly the hardest in this upcoming bull run. So guys, if that sounds good to you, do me a favor, destroy the like button. If you're new to the channel, what's up? My name is Kyle Chasse. I've been in crypto for 12 years. My job and objective here is to bring you the best alpha in the cryptoverse. So together we can make as much money as humanly possible. And when I say money, I mean crypto, right? Uh, so let's get into it guys. Without further ado, we're gonna look at the Ethereum charts. Now, I believe that what's going on right now, this kind of sell-off period and this kind of downtrend here is people being worried about the grayscale sell-offs. Now, one, one of the things, and I'll, I'll get to it in a second right now, but like, I believe that that what's happening right now is largely it's priced in, right? I think that when the Bitcoin ETF came, people weren't really sure and didn't really think about the grayscale overhang, but now people are thinking about it. And I think this is fairly priced in. Another thing that I'll get to in just a bit of why I believe that the grayscale selves won't have as much of a negative impact as many people thinking, this whole video, my friends, is about the Ethereum ecosystem. And I know a lot of people have kind of written off ETH as like dead, right? And I think that couldn't be further from the truth. And we're going to unpack that in a way that hopefully convinces you as much as I've been convinced, or at least gives you a foundation to do your own research off of. So what are the timelines here? So Nate Garachi says, when spot ETH ETF? And the Bloomberg analysts are thinking that it's still mid-July. The amended S1s, these are the final forms that need to happen for their approval, are due on July 8th, and they should come back by the 12th, meaning that theoretically, the launch of the ETFs to start trading are on the 15th. So we're looking at just under, you know, about two weeks from now. So Coinage says, crypto's two favorite ETF analysts are split on what to expect out of the ETH ETF launch. In one corner, Eric Bakunas, who predicted 15 to 20% of BTC inflows. And the other, Jeff Seyfart, who says he's more optimistic at 20 to 25%. If either are, cor are correct, ETH has absolutely won. I'm not going to play the clip for you. It's not necessary, but they have both been historically a little bit like, like they're, they're, I think their job is to be like very Wall Street and conservative in nature. They were conservative on the Bitcoin launch as far as the kind of volumes and flows. And I think that their job, you know, is to be accurate while definitely being on leaning to the more conservative side. So I think that even if we take these things, they're still going to be very bullish. And I'll tell you guys why right here. So remember there, this analyst is saying the, uh, the analysis is telling you how many percent in comparison to Bitcoin we can expect for the Ethereum flows. So you can see in total net, meaning even despite the $18 billion, $18.5 billion of outflow from Grayscale, net still is $14.6 billion for Bitcoin inflows to date. So in the past six, seven months, you've had $14.5 billion, even despite all the Grayscale sell-offs. That's a positive, net positive. So what would that mean for if ETH? We're looking at, you know, anywhere net within the next seven months, another $3 billion or so of inflows. Uh, and I, I think that's still relatively conservative. And you'll see why when we get into this news today. This is just a little bit of data on some things that we can consider with the ETF launch for Ethereum. One of the things I want to draw your attention to here is this volume. So ETH E is the Grayscale Ethereum Trust. Same, it's a similar to the GBTC, right? The Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, which means that you can see here that the holdings that they've had has been consistent because people can't sell. So the second it converts into an ETF, people are allowed to start selling. Now, you can see here just a few, uh, just a couple months ago in May, you had this huge spike. Why? Because you had this huge dip and you had this big uh, discount. So people were able to buy back here in April and May they were able to buy ETH at a discount of 25% to the spot price. 
and they're likely to take profits on that once this thing starts trading because they're hedge funds. They're doing it as a leverage, as a, as a, as a hedge fund play. But this is the point that I want to kind of bring to your attention right now. Now, people have had time to learn. And so if we go back to the Bitcoin chart and we zoom in over here, this is when the Bitcoin ETF started trading, right? It was the, it was the 10th of January. And then you can see we had the sell off down here and then boom, it was done kind of selling off. And then you had back up again and it took 29 days for it to go from the price it started trading at to recover to that same price, 29 days. So you had a month, right? And I've been telling you guys on this channel for a while now that once Ethereum starts trading, if we look at historical data, we can, we might see this kind of dip for a month. If the grayscale sell-offs are tremendous, that's a big if. Why? Because if you had just held, and it's kind of a big gamble, and you'll see in this video, but are you really going to try to take this play? You know, yes. Uh, if you want to accumulate more, you can try selling when it starts trading. But what happens if you don't get this? What happens if things, what happens if Grayscale decides to make their fees very low for Ethereum? What happens if people are smart and they realize that we're coming into a very, very soon to a bull run? What happens if we don't get those same massive outflows from Ethereum and you sell everything and it just goes higher after that, which is a very real possibility. We just don't know. So for me personally, I'd rather hold my ETH and just chill for 30 days, even if it does have a bit of a sell-off, because I know if you look at here, the price is going much, much higher, right? This is the price when it started trading Bitcoin. And now it's much higher than that uh, as it started trading at you know 45,000 and now we're at 61,000. So I think people have watched this and learned that you're probably better just off holding rather than trying to play the market like that. Not only that, but CryptoLark says and points out to you from Glassnode that we now have the least amount of, of Ethereum on exchanges basically in ever, in eight years or basically since, and, and we could have only had this much because Ethereum in its early days was proof of work, meaning that it needed to have emissions, which means that it couldn't have even had as much in circulation when it launched. So basically this is the lowest amount of Ethereum we've ever had on exchanges ever which means that you know supply and demand again you have you know potentially have the supply crunch coming up soon as more and more people now it's going to take time guys it's going to take time we still haven't even had the massive RIAs and things like that coming in for the bitcoin spot ETF the ethereum ETF will probably be a similar type of thing where you know it's going to take time but as you can see from the Van Eck report over here, so ETH 2030 price targets and optimal portfolio allocations, what they're suggesting here is a portfolio allocation of 60-40 right here. So you can see 60-40%. So whatever your portfolio is allocating toward crypto, they're saying that you should do a 60% allocation to Bitcoin, 40% to Ethereum, or sorry, sorry, uh, or 70-30. Actually, this is the 60-40, like the, the traditional 60-40. It's very Wall Street talk, but 70-30 between Ethereum and Bitcoin. So that's that's more on the optimistic side. Like I said, if Balkunis and Jeff think it's 15 to 25%, Van Eck is actually putting this more toward 30% if you look at it in those terms. Now, for some investigative, interesting things that I've put together over here, and this is just speculation I'm going to get into, guys, here, but it seems to make a lot of sense. Uh well, not quite. So BlackRock launches its first tokenized fund, Biddle, on Ethereum Network. We've talked about this before. We covered it many, many times. But what does this tell us? This is telling us that BlackRock is using Ethereum. It's not just speculating. It's literally using the ETH Network for their build, Biddle fund. So they are not just speculators. They are users, builders on it right now. They're using Ethereum. I know I've played this clip probably a hundred times on this channel before. We're gonna to listen to it again. We believe the next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets. And that means every stock, every bond will have its own basically QSIP. It'll be on one general ledger. Every investor, you and I, will have our own number, our own identification. We could rid ourselves of all issues around illicit activities about bonds and stocks and digital by having a 
well, a, 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 a tokenization. But the most important thing, we can customize strategies through tokenization that is, if it's every individual. We would have instantaneous settlement. Think about all the costs of settling bonds and stocks. Mm -hmm. But if you had a tokenization, everything would be immediate mm -hmm. because it's just a line item. And so we believe this is a technological transformation for financial assets. I believe if, if you want to talk about like voting and voting choice. and Okay, extremely important. Now, I know that you guys have probably heard that many times before, but what does it all mean? BlackRock and Citadel... Remember, Citadel are the a-holes who made uh, Robinhood turn off the buy button. Anyway, I'm a little bit still pissed off at them just because I think that they were a-holes for doing that. But anyway, it doesn't matter. BlackRock and Citadel backed Texas Stock Exchange Group to launch Texas Stock Exchange. Okay, so now let's let's think about this. What what did we just hear from Larry? Good old good old Larry, the biggest crypto influencer right now. Well, they're launching an exchange. And he thinks that the old way of doing things, the old slow settlement, the, all the problems that you have with like verification and validation and know your customer, all these things. And like Monday through Friday, taking holidays off and like nine to 4.30 trading, like what is that? That's ancient baloney, right? That's like when, like we, this is still like those hours are still from literally when people had to go to Wall Street and like write down paper and like like people were yelling buy and sell and like people were like like it's because people need to go sleep, right? We, we don't sleep anymore in crypto. Crypto never sleeps, right? So why why would we have a stock exchange that needs to go to sleep? It doesn't make any sense, right? It doesn't make any sense. So imagine, I mean, we live in a world, especially in America, where it's capitalistic, right? And uh, you know, it's not like the it's not like the uh, the the New York Stock Exchange uh, or the Nasdaq is a it's not like it's a it's a government ran entity. No, 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 no. It's a private, for profit company. So competition is real and it's fair. And if you don't adopt, if you don't adapt, and and you're not dynamic and you're not staying up with technology, you're going to get left behind like a dino. And so why wouldn't the new Toronto the the Texas Stock Exchange? That's why the hat is here. My guess is that all of the stocks, all of the bonds, as Larry just said, are going to be tokenized. You don't think that he's going to do that on their stock? Of course they're going to do that on their stock exchange. And so I think that this stock exchange will blow away. Now it's going to make them look so ridiculous. So this is just speculation, but it leads into a lot of other things of reasons we should be extremely bullish on Ethereum. And yes, they're going to be using Ethereum as an underlying settlement layer for this stuff. And that might mean that they're creating their own L2 for speed, or it might mean that a lot of the stuff is done off chain that settles on chain. So however you look at it, it's bullish ETH. This is going to be the settlement layer. It's the only thing that people can trust, you know, and don't get me wrong. I, I really like Solana. I think it's a great speculative asset. It's fun for shit coining. It's fun for all these kind of things. But when it comes down to what is going to be used by Wall Street, by massive financial institutions, by the big boys, it's going to be ETH. And this is why I think it's severely undervalued, right? People in the echo chamber of crypto Twitter and YouTube, and they just sit there and they talk about how great Solana is. And yeah, it's cheap and fast. I, I love the user experience. Like I like Solana, right? And I can't wait until it runs without flaw. I can't run, wait until it never goes down. I can't wait until Fire Dancer is implemented. These are going to be great. And I'm going to make a video about Solana soon and, and its ecosystem as one of the part of the series. However, when it comes down to where the real money is going to be parked, deployed and used, it's going to be ETH. Why? Because ETH is the only smart contract platform that doesn't go down, doesn't have any problems. It just works. It just works, right? And that is super critical. Like you can't have a massive mainstream stock exchange and have the damn network go down. You can't. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't work. So I made a post earlier that said, Ethereum ETF set to launch soon, paving the way for an explosive bull. Ethereum ETFs are expected uh, to hit the market within weeks, positioning us potentially for a massive bull cycle ahead. But this is exactly how to play it. I'd be looking into ETH, ETH beta plays, big sectors like RWAs, AI, DPIN, gaming, and meme coins. Now is the time to have conviction and sit pretty in the biggest players in the biggest sector. Comfortable conviction. Now, yeah, like 
I'm now personally in a place where I'm looking to allocate into more solid plays because the low cap memes have gotten really PVP, really like these things are like getting volume for like, it, it, like I said, it reminds me of the final days of the NFT bull market where it's just like you get 12 hour pump and everyone's selling on each other. It's horrible, but there are blue chips, right? So we'll talk about some of the plays that are coming up here uh, in the ecosystem. Ondo, I literally told you guys about on the day it launched. The day it launched, it's basically tied to Block rock in a way at the hip has so much institutional support. And you can see here a survey by Ertz and Young shows 50% of institutional investors are interested in tokenized assets, with 31% planning to act this year or next. 50% of institutional investors and 31% planning to act this year or next. The yield coin space currently driven by crypto native capital may see major growth from external capital. I would say that the leader right now in RWA is Ondo. And I told you guys about that on day one. Now, Seth over here shows a really good chart comparing just basically the bullish chart of Ondo and Caspa seeing how similar they look. And I am doing a Caspa video in as part of this ecosystem play. Let me know in the comments below guys, which Caspa KRC 20 tokens you're most bullish on because that kind of launched, it kind of went down, but still bullish on the ecosystem for sure. Ondo chart is looking great. And if you come back here, you can see it literally on day one, here is when I told you guys about, <laughs> about Ondo, right? And it's just been up only since then. So and it's going to continue to run, in my opinion. Now, there might be some sell-offs when the unlocks happen. However, you know, it's coming up the closer that we get to Q4, uh, the less likely we're going to have significant pullbacks, less likely that sell-offs and big investor unlocks will affect the market because we'll be in a much more bullish upward trajectory. And people won't be won't want to sell their bags because they'll realize that we're in full-on bull market. And why would you sell today when you're, it's going to be 10% or 20% more valuable tomorrow? And that kind of whole thing goes on for like 10 months or something. So the next one is ENS. I talked about this yesterday and there's a reason why, right? So Vitalik has been bullish on ENS for years. I, I bought some ENS domains myself and Vitalik says all L2s should be working on trustless Merkle proof based CCIP resolvers so that we can have ENS subdomains registerable, updatable, and readable directly on L2s. ENS is super important. It needs to be affordable. So basically Vitalik's making a few points right here. One, ENS is important. Two, CCIP, Chainlink, is important because it's going to connect all these chains and make them able to talk to each other. And basically, L2s are really important because ENS needs to be affordable, meaning that people need to be able to uh, have cheap and fast transactions using ENS, not just on ETH base layer. So ENS is a very profitable platform. It's making about a million dollars a month in revenue. Now, one of the things that I'd like to see more of is how that correlates to that value, that revenue flowing back into the token uh, there is some utility, but it is a very profitable protocol. It's sitting at about $3 billion valuation right now. And I expect it still to fly uh, in the coming, like, especially why? Because, well, everyone's going to be using ENS, right? So instead of like, hey, you want to invest in BlackRock's Biddle Fund 2, send your funds to, you know, Biddle2.eth, right? It's not going to be send your funds to like 0x47787B43, seven, 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 it's not going to be like that. It's going to be like send your funds to BlackRockBiddle2.eth. It's way easier for people to not mess up uh, if the ENS is like that. It's just, it's, it's just going to be an easier way for us to use blockchain. And Google adds ENS to search, which is insane. So basically they're starting to index all the ENS names and make it easy to search by, which I also believe that uh, ENS names will be able to be used as domains. So if I want to go to like kylechasse.eth website, like I can just type it in my Google browser and it'll go, my, go to my website. Now, some a-hole took my domain name, kylechasse.eth. If you want to give it back to me, that'd be nice. Or if you domain squatted and try to sell it to me, I'm not going to buy it. So good luck. Uh, anyway, <laughs> um, okay, so... Uh, GP Jr. says, plot twist, BlackRock and Citadel plan to launch a new national stock exchange. We already talked about that. And as we said, every stock, every bond will be tokenized by Chainlink, CCIP, 
and everyone will have a tokenized ID via ENS, right? And so ENS is kind of like your on-chain identity, right? So like if I have my Ethereum name service address, like Kyle, I have KyleMV.eth right now. And so if I'm working in the world of like regulated securities, which tokenize bonds, tokenize uh, uh, equities, tokenize stocks, are securities, right? And so if I want to dabble in that world, let's say I want to go buy tokenized Tesla or something like that, or tokenized Coinbase stock, then I need to have, make sure I'm, I'm doing that uh, on a on a regulated, secure infrastructure, right? So that means I need my KYC, and I'm America, maybe I need to be a credit investor, but all, all that can be tied to my ENS, and which can be my like on-chain identity, right? And so all of us will have these ones, everyone. And so when everything becomes tokenized, as Larry says, and Larry's not just some guy, right? Larry like pretty much controls a lot of things. BlackRock runs the world. So if Larry says everything will be tokenized and then people need an ENS to start trading and like registering their identity, it's going to be extremely, extremely popular. And as you guys can see here, ENS was once at $116. It's now sitting at 29. You actually have like a, like a little bit of a pullback happening right now. But imagine if everybody has an ENS in the financial world. So there's going to be 100 million people plus or something like that more that are registered with ENS. And that's going to be crazy revenue. And my hopes and dreams are that that actually becomes, you know, something that is pushed back into the, the token. Now, Chainlink is the next play on this agenda here. And those of you who've been watching my channel for a long time, no, but let's just replay this for all of you guys who are new here calculation that there might be a good buying opportunity. And guys, I just came in right now at, you know, right around this, this price for, for Chainlink. Now, like I said, I deployed a million dollars into it and that was a big decision I had to do, uh, selling some of my Bitcoin and Ethereum. And uh, that might not be it. I might look for a better opportunity uh, to come into this, but I- Okay, so as you guys know, I made a, a, a pretty big play back then and I'm really glad I did. I think that, you know, it's all, so I've made a million dollars on that so far already, but, I expect by my selling nothing. No, I'm not taking any profits. I, I think this like it, it, Chainlink is one of the most obvious massive plays ever. It's like it's the blue chip that I think is going to just crush once they turn on the revenue switch, right? And that's probably going to happen this year. They've been doing these trials with everybody forever, right? Namely DTCC, which processes quadrillions of dollars every year in value. And they've also been running these NAV pilots or these, they, basically they've been doing everything that you would do in pre-production before you go to mainnet. All of these testing, all of this implementation, all of this stuff, right? And once these things go mainnet and that's gonna happen, because remember, we just we just told you about that, right? We just told you that, that Larry Fink says everything will be tokenized and it's all gonna be done through Chainlink CCIP. And they're working with DTCC and they're working with Swift and they're working with all these, like they will be like the mycelium literally of the financial infrastructure because all of these different institutions, everyone will be have their own blockchains, all the stuff. And what connects all of that is CCIP. And that's why you can't compare something like Pith or something to Chainlink. It's not about price feeds. I didn't become bullish on Chainlink until CCIP. And then I realized, holy crap, this is huge. So what is my price target for my price target for Chainlink? Well, I told you before, like by 2030, I think it's a thousand dollar token, right? And right now it's at 14 bucks. What's going to happen this coming bull run? Well, that just depends on when they turn, when these things become finalized, but Texas stock exchange, like this is all going to happen so soon. I think by the end of the year, all this starts to really happen. Now, you know, if you guys are looking for solid blue chips, I can't think of a better one than Chainlink. Now I want to show you why. I had a good call. You know, you guys know I'm a VC. I have got calls all the time with different amazing projects, right? And I had a call earlier with someone and he pointed my attention to this. Conduit blew my mind, right? And Conduit is a, is a, is a basically a roll up as a service. And it's so crazy. You can just basically come here and you can roll, you can spin up your own layer two or your own layer three in 15 minutes with no code. <sighs> but what does that mean? That means that everyone's going to have their own blockchain soon, their own apps. And, and so like, and so everyone's going to have their own blockchains. They all need to commu communicate with each other. That is CCIP. Like this thing is in actually insane. If you go to your app, let's, let's see if I can just show you guys real quick. Open the app. 
And basically what you can do, oh, I need, to, I need to sign in all that stuff. I'll do it later. But you just go down and you start clicking different things here. And you just say like, okay, I want it to be a layer two on ETH or layer three, settle on base with data availability on Celestia, blah, blah, blah. And then you can just click like, it's like, just, it's like a menu. You just pick, and now you, now you next thing I have my own layer three. Anyone can do it. Super simple. It's absolutely amazing. And you can see some of these guys have already done it. Like uh, everyone who's used it so far, You've got Avo, you've got Degen Chain. You know, some of these guys have already been using this, just super mode, which just launched recently. So it's very, very easy. And actually it's kind of like a little bit, it's a little bit tricky because sometimes I get these, now I know better. Sometimes I get these pitch decks and they're like, yeah, we're doing this roll up and we're so cool. And we do all this, like, you know, we're using all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, not, now I'm just gonna be like, bro, did you just use Conduit? Uh, anyway, the point is that there's going to be thousands and thousands and thousands of blockchains. And it's just a fact, just a, just a fact. Just, just accept that now, right? And, uh, and so they're all going to be connected through Chainlink. Now, as you can see, a lot of bulls have been buying Chainlink over the past seven days. This is everything, this is, everything has come off of Binance in the past seven days, all in Link. So whales buying the crap out of it, right? $30 million in the past seven days, just on Binance alone. And Coinbase derivatives, filed for a link futures, right? And I'm pretty sure they're, they're going to get this with the CFTC. Guess what happens? Once you get a link futures ETF, spot follows right behind it. And the traditional financial world will definitely understand Chainlink. It's so easy to understand. It's like, imagine the SWIFT and the clearinghouse for every financial institution in the world. Who's not buying that? Like I said before, I think... I think that Link goes to a trillion dollar market cap by 2030. That's my that's my that's my bet on it. Okay, check this out. This thing was just something that I've been talking about forever to you guys. I talked about it before it even launched. Opportunity, and I, I out of all these tokens, guys, the only one that I literally bought before I just filmed this show because I wanted to get an opportunity here was Banana. But this thing was just something that I've been talking about forever to you guys. I talked about it before it even launched. I told you exactly how to get into it, how to play the launch, to get it at six bucks, you know, like between five and six bucks, right? And so, you, you know, if you would have watched that video and learned how to get in it, you don't. So yeah, I told you guys about it at five or six dollars. And where is it right now? It, and there's a very good reason to be, to, be there, to be bullish at that. Right now, it's at $51. So you're up and it was just, a little bit ago at 55. So up nine, almost 10 X. And why? Because it makes all the sense in the world there. And they continue to build and innovate. People laughed at me, literally laughed at me when I said, buy banana gun. And they thought, oh, you're so dumb. It's banana gun. Look, it's a banana. No, it's the best sniping bot on the market by far. And they keep building cool things, really, really cool things. They're building, uh, so they're building the web app soon, which is going to be great because I honestly don't really like to use Telegram bots so much myself. So I'd much rather have a terminal that I can trade off uh, here. And then they, they have an app coming on the Apple App Store soon as well. And when it comes down to data, I like data, you can see that this thing is just a very bullish protocol, extremely bullish. And you can see they have Solana implemented, Base, uh, Ethereum, and they've done five, over $5 billion in volume on the bot alone, generating huge amounts of revenue. If you're staking, you're earning rewards. And it's just all the charts are up and to the right. And this is, what, this is exactly what happens when you have a revenue sharing protocol that generates revenue and shares it with its token holders. This is why paid and Commonwealth are going to do so well in the bull run because it shares 100% of revenue with token holders. I think Banana Gun is significantly less than that. And from my calculations... Paid's revenue and Commonwealth's revenue should be pretty insane. So, but just goes to show you why I'm so bullish on real world revenue generating protocols and why I've decided to, you know, model my token economic models for the things that we're building based on something like Banana Gun, but even on steroids. But anyway, Banana Gun, still extremely bullish. This thing is a multi-billion dollar uh, market cap for sure. In my opinion, not financial advice. In this coming bull run, sitting at $124 million market cap right now, 461 fully diluted, but they continue to innovate. The devs show their show their like continued dedication to being the best. And uh, I'm just incredibly bullish on it. So now let's talk a little bit about memes 
And yeah, so remember, this is all about Ethereum. So before entering a trade, ask yourself, is the meme good, funny, relatable? Is it, does it, is it dynamic? Can it be used in a bunch of different things, right? Is it going to be identifiable but and identified and funny by any language in the world, any person in the world, right? We can all kind of laugh at like a funny or cute looking dog, but we can't like all be so interested in like Vitalik's cat, for example. Nobody, like most people don't even know who Vitalik is in the other world. Like I, I can't believe I'm in America right now and I don't spend a lot of time here, but as I have been in America, I've been talking to a lot of like normies and I just ask people like, do you have crypto? I can't believe how many people don't have crypto or use it yet, which is insane. We're still very early, ladies and gentlemen. Pat yourself on the back if you're here watching this and you're still here because we are still way early. You guys might think you're late, but you're still very, very early. Is the memes narrative and meta good? Is the team behind it good? Uh, do they have, have, have done previous projects? Are the KOLs on board? Very important. What groups are supporting the meme and how is the community kind of things that we should be looking at? So memes on, on ETH, Pepe. Remember, I, talk, I told you guys about Pepe on the way up. You guys know uh, my, all my trades were on chain. I made a, a, a killing uh, on, on Pepe and then I sold it all and I bought Pepe coin on ETH. Now Pepe coin is going to be, this is the true OG Pepe coin. If you haven't seen my video on it, definitely go do that and you'll know exactly why I'm so bullish. But if you've been watching this channel, you probably know, but it's the original Pepe. And this month, they have the brains for based AI, the brain mint, which will severely reduce the supply of Pepe coin. And in my opinion, like, like is this Pepe, Pepe on ETH a good play? It's probably going to do all right. Now, if the pepening happens where Pepe coin actually flips Pepe, you could see massive capitulation if that happens. But in the interim, at least for a little while, Pepe is probably still a decent play. Although for me, I'm out. I'm in Pepe coin heavily, as you guys might know. Sitting at $306 million valuation, still tons and tons of up, right, upside to go. Plus about to see a supply shock the world has never seen. Now, Hitesh over here, very, very smart guy, very, very smart guy, says now in BitTensor, you have subnets, 32 subnets, which you need to register by paying in Tau. The registration cost of subnets is around $250,000. Well, base AI, we have 1,024 brains and the Genesis brain will be minted by burning 1,000 Pepe coins. And this talks about this upcoming, uh, you know, so the base AI and Pepe coin are one and the same, essentially, as far as the founders, although they're very, very different, right? Pepe coin also has Kekbot, which is going to be one of the most insane trading bots in the world where you can literally just talk to your phone and do all kinds of complex, interesting trading things using Kekbot. Can't wait till that thing launches. Going to be amazing. Kekbot is actually being trained by one of the AI models on based AI. Whole thing blows my mind. Absolutely insane. If you guys haven't dug in, highly suggest that you go do your research on Pepe coin and based AI. It's where I have a huge amount of my net worth, like not even a small amount, like as much money as I have in Bitcoin and ETH, I have in Pepe coin and base AI, which is insane to say. I never thought I'd say that. It's the truth. Very much the truth. Now, where are we with base AI? What's going on? Well, if you look over here, you can see that base AI test at Cayenne right before it goes mainnet is actually live. This is the Explorer over here for the test net and it's up and running and it's running very well. So uh, they have this running. And so probably in this month is when the main net of base goes live and they already have people building on it. And it's absolutely insane actually right now. I think it's sitting at right now like a $140 million FTV. Are you kidding me? Okay, $140 million. And we look at BitTensor, which we know that this is actually going to be better than BitTensor. Uh, but BitTensor is probably sitting at like what? Like, okay, it's a, uh, well, it's, it was at $15 billion valuation. Now it's at five. But based is sitting at $140 million. Are you kidding me? It's the most obvious play in the world to me. Yeah, I just couldn't be more bullish. Now, AOs is something you guys know I've been bullish on for a long time. Why? So they've been building like forever. It's like, like, like almost like, <laughs> like, like, I think they've been working on AOs since like 2000. God, I want to say like 16 or 17, maybe, maybe it's 19 or something like that. But like, forever, right? I was an advisor for them for a long time. Now I'm just a, a, a still kind of like an ambassador, still hold a huge bag. And they basically built the entire AWS model 
on their own chain, right? They've got a Cosmos chain. And later in Q4, they're going to have their own native tokens on the AOS blockchain. And so, Kyle, why are you mentioning AOS if we're talking about the Ethereum ecosystem? Well, it's because for now, the token is still on ETH, right? Until they have their own token standard on top of AOS, for now, it's still an ETH token um, because that's not the way it works, right? The AOS blockchain right now isn't meant for tokenized smart contracts on top. It's meant to be an infrastructure provider for people that want decentralized compute, decentralized AI connectivity, uh, decentralized inference for AI, and everything else that you want storage, you want, you want streaming, you want media. That's what AOS provides. And actually... Uh, one of the secret projects that we're working on will uh, be using AOS for its essentially services, its hosting services. So already listed on Coinbase, a Binance listing I'm th I think is inevitable happen this year or early next year. And it's got a pretty good discount right now. Also, one of the most important things to notice over here is recently AOS was listed on NVIDIA's accelerated application catalog. First Web3 project to be listed on NVIDIA's accelerated application catalog. So on the official, you can go here and check it out yourself. Go to NVIDIA accelerated applications and look for AOS here. First Web3 project that is uh, partnered with NVIDIA. It's really, really, really bullish. And if you look at the price right now, it's at 53 cents. Uh, nice pullback from even just a couple months ago when it was $1.02, but still quite short from its all-time high at you know $2.60. Where is this headed? Well, it never really got the kind of uh, attention that it deserves. And so in this bull market, I still think that this is you know a, a really, really good play because if we look at the essentially the market cap of AOS, it's still, I think it's at like, what is it? Like five, it's, it's 588 million and fully, and it's fully diluted already. That means there's no more VC unlocks, no more big dumping. And so you've got basically a $588 million market cap for something that should likely be in like the tens of billions of dollars. Now, not financial advice, do your own research, you know, just something I'm heavily invested in. These are essentially wrapping up and rounding my most bullish picks in the Ethereum ecosystem. And I made this, this Excel sheet that will be in the description below for you guys. So if you guys are excited for that, let me know. And let me also, let me guys also know what other L1 ecosystems I should talk about. We've talked about Ton so far. We've talked about Ethereum. And we're going to talk about Bitcoin, Solana. And I'm thinking Phantom. But let me know if that's the one I should be talking about. Or let me know if there's any other L1s. Oh, obviously Caspa. We're making a video on Caspa as well. Very bullish on that ecosystem as well. That's to wrap it up, guys. I will catch you on the next one. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.